Yo, 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 it's your boy West the Tech here to bring you another one of my personal favorite tech tips to help you as an artist growing your craft. And today we're gonna go over how to turn your music hobby into a music business, all right? So if you're a recording artist who's looking into actually turning your music hobby into an actual music business, then this is the perfect video for you because in this video, I'm gonna go over everything that you need to know in regards to turning your music hobby into an actual music business, all right? Now, before I can I definitely want to let you guys know about my free music business checklist tool that's available on my website right now. This is for those of you who is looking into actually starting your own music business, but you don't know where to start. All right. You can actually download this free checklist. All right. And you will actually be able to know three things right away to actually start your own music business moving forward. So if you want to check that out, go ahead and click on the link above. I'll also leave the link in the descriptions below. All right. And it's even fitting for this particular video because in this video, I'm actually going to be talking about the differences between actually actually having a music hobby versus having a music business and what you can actually do in order to turn into someone who's doing a music hobby to someone who's actually has a music business. And those three steps in that checklist is included in those steps. All right. So first and foremost, I believe for every single independent artist, before you can really, really understand or really, really make a decision on to whether you want to actually turn your music hobby into a music business is you have to first understand if that's even something that you truly want to do. All right. Now, this is very, very important because I know a lot of independent artists and I've come across a lot of independent artists who weren't able to really be able to tell the difference. And they end up putting themselves in a position that they no longer enjoyed music the way they once did because they wasn't sure if they wanted a music hobby, if they wanted to do music as a hobby, or if they actually wanted to actually have a music business, all right? So the biggest question that you have to ask yourself at the end of the day, and I know this is a hard question, and I know some people may say one is obvious than the other, but I'm gonna ask it like this. Do you prefer to do the art, or do you prefer to actually make an income out of it? All right. This is a very, very tough question because a lot of people feel that you can't have it both ways. A lot of people feel like if you're focusing on the income, the art diminishes or if you focus on the art, the business diminishes. Right. Well, the way I feel about it is very, very different from either one of those things. It's really just identifying what matters to you the most and why you're actually in the game. All right. And what I mean by that is. If you really just like making music and you just love the art form and you just love creating it and you don't care what happens with the music, it doesn't matter to you if it's on any streaming platforms or anything like that. You just do it for the sake of just enjoying it. Then it is a hobby to you. You just like doing it the same way bowling is a hobby, the same way going to basketball or football games is a hobby, the same way watching TV or Netflix is a hobby. It's just a hobby. And there's nothing wrong with making music as a hobby, right? I know some people be like, oh, but you're spending mo money on studio time. You're spending money on this. If you're not really doing anything, why do you do it? I completely disagree with that because me, myself, I own a recording studio and I have plenty of artists who just come here just to make music some do it because it's just a way it's just a release some do it because it's fun it's entertainment some do it because they just they just can't get their mind right or they want to be able to express themselves through music that they can't easily say in words when speaking to somebody all right these are all great reasons to go to the studio and you should never let anybody make you feel bad for spending money on studio time and 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 beats and all of these things to make music even if you don't want to actually have a music career. Let's be honest, those of you who like bowling, you spend money at the bowling alley, you, you spend money on getting the shoes, you might buy your own bowling balls, which are very expensive, you might buy your own bowling shoes. When you go to the bowling alley, you eat, you drink, you spend money on that hobby, just like you would spend money on any other hobby. So never let anyone make you feel bad for spending money on a hobby because it's your vice, it's what you enjoy doing. And just because you spend money on making music doesn't mean that you actually have to have a music career doesn't mean that you have to have a music business 
No different than bowling. That Just because you enjoy bowling and you spend so much money on it, doesn't mean that you want to be a professional bowler. It doesn't mean that you want to join a bowling league. You get what I'm saying? It's the same thing or for any sport. Or let's say you enjoy cars and you, you, know, you spend a lot of money on your car. That doesn't mean that you want to be a pro car racer. That doesn't mean that you want to join NASCAR or anything like that. It's just your hobby and it's okay to have that hobby. I think that's one of the biggest misconceptions that we get as musicians is that everybody feels like if you are spending money on it, you should be making money off of it. And that's not the case because some of us just like making music as a hobby. And if you're one of those people, it's perfectly, perfectly fine, all right? You just have to be able to identify if that's the reason you're making music or if it's the other way. Now, the other way is for those of you who enjoy making music, but you, but music is the only thing that you want to do. You actually want to make a, uh, build a career off of it. You actually want your income to only be from your music. That's what I do. I do music full time. It is, it is my, it is not my hobby. It is my profession. It's what I do. Bowling is my hobby. I like to go bowl from time to time. Music is my profession. I do this as my career. This is what I do. I own a recording studio. I'm always in the process of making music. So I actually own a, a music business and I've had a music business for years now. So if you're one of those people, then music is not just the art. It is also a business. And more importantly, a lot of times it's more of a business than an art. All right. And that's what hinders a lot of independent artists when they actually want to seek a music career or start a music business because with a music business you can't look at it as like oh i'm just an artist trying to make money it's not that you actually have to look at the music business the same way you would look at any other business i'll give you an example let's say you want to be a bakery right or you want to own a bakery and you want to be a baker right if you want to start that business you're gonna to have to train right? You probably know some things, but you're going to have to train. You're going to have to buy materials. You're going to have to buy product. If you want to open a store, you're going to have to open up a storefront. You're going to have to probably get out a loan and do all of these things to open up the store. You're going to have to get certified. There's so many different things that you're going to have to do to be able to actually open up that bakery and start that actual business, all right? It's the same thing when you want to have an official music career. It's the same thing when you want to be an official recording artist, right? You have to get an LLC just like any other business. You have to actually um, report your income and profits or your, your income and expenses. There's all of these other things that you have to do. You have to have insurance on there. You have to market. You have to promote. There's all of these things that you have to do that you would do with any other business. All right. And so if you want to actually have a career as a music artist or as a recording artist or producer or whatever you want to do in music you want to actually have a career you have to treat that as a business more than anything else right it doesn't take away from those who want to do it as a hobby or anything else it's just two different ways of looking at it you could love music equally on both sides you just have an overall goal that's a little different. With a music business, your goal is to make a career out of this. As a hobby, your goal is just to have fun and enjoy what you love doing. All right, those are two different things. Sometimes they merge, they can merge a lot because I enjoy making music. And regardless that it's a business, I enjoy making music, but most of my music business isn't making music. Most of my music business is actually running the business just like any other business. So that's really something that you want to actually consider and really be transparent and vulnerable with yourself and ask yourself that question. Do you want to spend most of your time just doing music, having fun and not making any money off of it, which is perfectly fine because that's what all hobbies are. Or do you actually want to spend most of your time running the business and doing music from time to time in between those. Because if you run a music business, I'm telling you right now, 80% of your time will be running the business and not actually doing the music. What do I mean by running the music, of uh, the business? You're gonna have to be promoting your music. You're going to have to be marketing your music. You're going to have to be not only creating it, but setting up everything in place to get it distributed, getting it on streaming platforms. You're gonna have to do all of these things and continuously run and run the business. A lot of us like to be artists. Not many of us want to actually be business people, right? And that's what makes it difficult because 
you really just, just want to make music. You don't want to have to do all of those things. This is the reason why people get managers, right? Because the manager can focus on the business when you only have to focus on the art. So if you want a happy medium, that's something you could th think about as well. You could maybe just get a manager to run the business. That way you only focus on the art. The only con to that is, is you have to trust that manager. You have to know if what that manager is doing is really benefiting you as an independent artist. It's like putting somebody else, it's just like putting a manager, let's go back to that bakery example. It's like putting a manager in, in charge of your bakery. If he doesn't know, he or she doesn't know how you like your bakery to be operated, then your bakery could fail. On top of that, on top of that is, you have to pay that manager to run that bakery. Just like you would have to pay that manager to run your music career, it's the same thing, right? So that having a manager is usually the happy medium if you struggle with the business side or don't want to do the business side. And another aspect of it is a lot of independent artists just want to get a record deal, right? You get a record deal because you know the record label will handle the business side and you just have to handle the art side. That is another way you could do it. The only problem with that is in this day and age, you are, if you want to actually get signed to a record label, record labels aren't in the business anymore of developing artists. Record labels are in the business of finding artists who are already developed, who have already built up their business, who have already built up their fan base, who already did the marketing and have their own fan base and all of those things, and they're willing to invest in those people. They're not building artists from the ground up anymore like it used to be, right? So if you want a record, if you want a record deal, you kind of have to start your own music business anyway. You have to uh, already be business minded anyway before you can get to that, right? By that point, once that record deal comes, you may not even want it anymore because you already learned everything that you had to learn in order to run your own music business. So even when you're looking at getting a record label deal, you still have to have that business mindset. You still have to have that independent business mindset because those are the people that they're looking for. They're looking for the people who've already built up their own brand, built up their own business and things like that, right? So all in all, either way, it's not bad. You're not wrong for choosing this side or that side and never let anybody make you feel bad for choosing either side or the other. Some people just like to make music as a hobby. They just, just like people like to paint as a hobby, which is another art form. People like to sculpt as an art form. That's just, that's just another art form. That doesn't mean every painter wants to open up a, a um, a paint gallery, right? And and pay for people to come in and buy their and sell their paintings and stuff. I used to paint as a kid. I love painting. I don't sell my paintings. I'm not in the I don't do it to sell it. You get what I do it for the art and I never had any intentions of actually making a profit out of it. And that's perfectly fine. Music is the same as any other art form. You could it could be a hobby or it could be a business. It's just all up to you. Once you have identified which one of those things you want to do, then you know where to proceed from there, whether you want to focus on actually turning your hobby into a business. And if you want to turn your music hobby into a business, the first step that I would always tell everybody to do is grab that checklist because that checklist is going to give you, like I told you earlier, three things that you could do right away to actually start your own music business. All right. One of those things is to actually build an LLC. LLC, which is something I talked about earlier. If you want more information on that, grab the check list book. I also have a video in regards to that as well. I'll leave the link above. I'll put the link in the descriptions as well if you want to know more about what an actual LLC is and why you need it as an independent artist. All right. But there are other things as well. Um, you definitely want to follow or subscribe to my channel because my channel gives so much information about actually running a music business. So if you're not subscribed yet, make sure you subscribe. Most of my videos cater to that when it comes to finding your own music distribution and all of the business stuff when it comes to the music. Don't really focus on the art on my channel. My channel is mostly dedicated to music business coaching. So if you want to know more about the business side, definitely subscribe to my channel. Check, take a look at all my videos and put questions in there or put questions that you may have in the comment section below all right also i don't know if you guys know about this yet but this is something new that i started this year i actually have my tuesday q a's all right so moving forward every tuesday i'm going to be hopping on youtube live at 12 noon eastern time answering questions live 
and, um, ask, answering questions live right here on YouTube. So if you want your question answers faster, just join in on my Tuesday Q and A, and I'll be able to answer them live for you. If not, you can leave it in the comment section below, and hopefully I can get to them. All right. But that's pretty much it, guys. That's how you essentially again before you could turn your music hobby into a music business you have to first identify if you want to do music as a hobby or a business in the first place once you figure that out then we could talk from there all right but that's pretty much it that's really what i wanted to talk about in this video again like i told you guys you know you could leave comments in the comment section below tune in every tuesday at noon eastern time for my live q and a's and also i do have a membership program that's a part of my channel you can join the west of tech a membership club where you can get priority comments where you can get all of these different perks including free one-on-one -on -one music business coaching sessions so if you're interested in that just hit the join button on the bottom of the screen as well and you could join my membership i have different tiers that offer different perks so definitely take a look at that when you get a chance all right but anyways that's pretty much it guys thank you guys for tuning in and i'll see you guys next week peace Can't nobody face me. Yeah. Can't face me. I feel like Joe.